Welcome back everybody. This video we're going to be talking about how to use number methods. Now you need to understand up front that there's two real ways to call methods. One way is to call it on the number object. So you could say number dot. And then there's all kinds of this junk you can use in your program. The other way is to create our own instance of a number and call our methods on that. For example, we might say let x equal 5 and then we could say x dot. And then there's all kinds of other junk we can use. We're going to start by talking about the ones called on the number object directly. If you come from other programming languages, you can think of these as static methods. And what that means is you don't have to make an instance of number, you can just use them right away. Before we dive in though, I definitely want to beg you guys, <laughs> man am I desperate or what? No, check out the link in the description for Dev Mountain, who is our generous sponsor giving me loads of cash to buy pizza, and also motivating me to make these incredible videos for you guys. So please check them out, they are a developer bootcamp, and what they do is they help you get a job in the industry by giving you everything you need to know about the web development ecosystem. So you're going to be learning about JavaScript, React, Node.js, Git and GitHub, testing, quality assurance, using your experience, etc. So if you don't want to waste your time watching these boring videos, then go check out Dev Mountain. They're going to give you what you need to know and get you going in the right direction. And with that, let's jump into some number methods. Specifically, we're going to be talking about parse int. So there's parse int and parse float. What these do is basically take a string and try to convert it to a number. Ew, my dog is like barfing over there. You can use the float version, but I'm just going to work with int just because I think ints are simpler to work with. But once you got this down, the float version works exactly the same way. So let's say, for example, you wanted to add two numbers. So we have x is 5, and let's say y is 10 in, in quotes. So this is a string. When you add these, you're not going to get 15, you're going to get 510. So if we do x plus y, do a refresh, we get 510. That's because this is coerced to a string, and then they're concatenated. But what we could do instead is we could say, we're going to create a new variable. Let's call it y int and we're going to call number.parseInt. And inside of here, you can pass in y. So this is going to make it a number, which means we can use that inside of our code. And now when we do a refresh, we get the value 15. Oh yeah, doing math, that's what's up. Another way you could do this is just call the number constructor like so, and do a refresh. That works the same way, but the parseInt might give us some more flexibility. So I'm going to put that back in here. For example, we might have something like 10.923 is my fave number. Well, this will actually work because it's going to take the value at the beginning of the string. So when we add these together, uh, what? What's going on? I think I broke it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Oh, man. Oh, I was literally going to talk to you guys about how when you do parse int, <laughs> obviously it's going to crop anything after the decimal. So it's cutting 10 off and just giving us the value 10, which is why nothing changed. Oh man, that just really stretched my brain. Okay, sorry I'm dumb. Let's talk about the next thing, which is how parsint crops numbers. <laughs> so if we had a number in here, like 10.9, the thing is, is that it doesn't round. It'll truncate this. So anything after the decimal is gone. Even if we're at 99999, it doesn't matter, it's still going to be the value 10. If you need to reserve those decimal values, then you don't want to use parse int, you want to use parse float. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. So now when we have strings in here, it, it's still going to work, and we're going to get the same value there. So this was a very, very light introduction to parse int. There is one more cool thing I wanted to teach you guys with parseInt, and we're going to be talking about that in the next video. That is a very specific application of parseInt. If you want to convert from decimal to binary, octal, hexadecimal, or back, you can do that with parseInt. So check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun, and this is one of those things where you can actually make some cool applications and have a little bit of fun. So please be sure to subscribe and check out the next video. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.